This week, the Associated Press wrote extensively about the decline of orphanages around the world. And here to talk more about that trend is Terry Musin, the co-host of The 700 Club and the founder of Orphans Promise. Thanks for joining us here in Studio 9. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. So you, uh, from your vantage point, are you really seeing this decline in orphanages? I see a movement toward that. It is considered, <clears throat> excuse me, in orphan care today, best practices that children be in homes or families rather than orphanages as we know them. My own daughters came out of an orphanage of 350 kids. It's almost like a human puppy mill, you know, they just keep pulling them in and spilling them out. So I see that and I'm happy to see it. I think it's going to take a while for that to actually manifest and become reality. What do you see driving it and why do you think it, uh, the progress might be slow? Well, I think a couple of things are driving it. I think, one, no country likes to think that they're known for having thousands and thousands of orphans. Um, I think another thing that's driving it is the realization that children find something in family and in a family setting that you can't get in an institution. Institutions turn out people with victim mentalities, people who are... Um, diminished emotionally, psychologically, don't know how to, how to actually connect and relate to people very often on a, on a deeper level. Um, I think that we want all children to have an opportunity to, to thrive and to grow and to do well. And where does that come from? Usually the family unit. So, you know, what we're needing is smaller homes if children don't have a family to go to, smaller homes where children can have a, a mom and a dad or at least one parent that's overseeing a family-like setting. So they know what family is. How can you grow up and have a family if you have never been in one? Mm -hmm. I also think that... Um, you know, the countries want, some countries want to get into the EU and it favors them to not have the population of orphans in big institutions, a known commodity for them. So I think that's part of it. Overall, I think it's just become seen as best practices. We want children to thrive in every country and to become the leaders of tomorrow. And you have to invest in them now for that to happen. And you were saying you think progress might be slow, though. There's been some excitement, some hype, mm -hmm. but uh, it's going to take a while, perhaps, to really close down these large institutions. Well, where are you going to go with those children? You know, I think the effort is in Orphan's Promise, we have a program called Keeping Families Together. And a family qualifies for that program for their desire to have their children with them. But they have to learn uh, how to parent well, they have to start some kind of a microenterprise program that would allow them to rise above the poverty they're dealing with and be able to feed and, and um, just nurture their families. And it's a two-year commitment of every family that comes into that program. So now multiply that times the thousands of orphanages that exist for children around the world. Um, people like the idea of giving to orphanages, but really we need to be concerned, I think, about helping individual children heal, thrive, and do well. Mm -hmm. So for people in the church who are looking at this and saying, wow, yeah, maybe I shouldn't give to an orphanage, but I do want to help, what do you think are some good ways that people in the church can be thinking about this situation? Well, first of all, I, I think for all, know who you're giving to. You know, give to someone who's accountable to you for, in some capacity with reports and, and that has feet on the ground. Uh, you know, don't just throw your money at something you don't know anything about because a little bit of money can make a big difference in many, many instances. Um, you know, for, for churches that want to help support families that are adopting in your church, it's very costly to do that. Come on board with that. Encourage them in the process. Just, just getting the child to become a part of your family is only step number one, becoming family is an ongoing process. So encourage them and stand with them, walk through that journey with them. You know, right here in the United States, our foster care system has a half a million children in it. If you have the heart for it and God's called you to it, be a foster care parent that can pour value and love and compassion into the life of a child. Some of those children are in 10, 11 foster care homes before they ever come out of the system. There's lots we can do and support good work that's going on worldwide. Well, I know this really, really circles back to the church, and I think the church has always had a heart for orphans, but especially when we're talking about closing orphanages, I, you know, it, it just begs the question, who then is going to take care of these kids? Yes. Well, I think you see, you know, there's an organization now called World Without Orphans that started as Ukraine Without Orphans, and it called upon the church. It said, will you come and foster these children? Will you take a child into your home, love them, parent them, help them learn what it means to belong and to be part of? That's grown into a worldwide organization. And I went to the conference the year before last, and there were 
just hundreds of countries represented there. Everybody recognizes the need. And, you know, as believers, we all want to do something that matters mm -hmm. and that lines up with God's heart and with his word to make a difference. So the, the, the effort is being made. I think the vision has been cast. And so we just need to be diligent. You know, it's, it's a process. And so let's just head for the finish line and link arms together and make a difference. Mm -hmm. Good words. Good words. Terry Musin, thanks for your time. Thank you, Heather.